So another question that might arise, when we're undergoing through this process of individual transformation, can we transform the relationships we're in with that process? And this is where uh, many spiritual adepts agree that it is a very, very big illusion to assume that while a person is undergoing through that process of transformation, he or she is capable of doing the job for the others. Because it only takes place within one's own psyche, within one's own body on all its levels. It is a very lonely journey in that respect. So being in a relationship could give us a sense of certain support and nurturing, but we will be mistaken if we will take that as the kind of guarantee that our whole structure or the infrastructure of the world that we've existed prior to the awakening is going to remain intact. In fact, the case is often the opposite of that. Often we find ourselves that the world we are in prior to the awakening become the burning ground of where this process is taking us. And it takes a tremendous amount of inner commitment and resolve to be able to go through that process. We cannot take others through the alchemical cauldron that we've jumped in or found ourselves. It is simply, simply impossible. It's not in the nature of consciousness. Obviously, all of us who have been surrounded with true love, true friendship, true partnership, feel incredibly responsible for those whom we, so to speak, leave behind. We don't leave them behind, but we do. And this would have to be understood. We'd have to be very sincere with ourselves is that this process, when our consciousness is going through the process of unwinding, you know, rewiring, a total rewiring, there is no relationship left that has not been touched through that process. And I will tell you that the most profound ground for transformation actually happens on the level of the family. The mother that undergoes the process of transformation and awakening will no longer relate to her own kids in the same way as she related to them prior to that. So goes for the father. The son will never have the same relationship with his father or his mother. This is what all the prophets and with all the avatars and spiritual, so to speak, luminaries have been talking about. It's like the Jesus Christ said, I will set son against the father. How to understand that? Is to understand that basically the son and father relationship undergoes through the tremendous transformation. Where there was a son and where there was a father, after the awakening takes place and things are seen as they are, as opposed to the sort of conventional set of ways of how we're supposed to see them. No father is being found. And that was the, you know, the kind of mythical dialogue between Buddha and his own father when he came back and he spoke to him as, Sir, you know, this is me. I'm Buddha, follow me. And the father goes, you know, how dare you speak to me like that, so and so, but Buddha just tells him, you know, 
I'm awakened, I'm not your son, and you have a choice to follow me. How much that, of course, um, can be translated into our day-to-day -day life, into our daily, you know, daily situation is another matter. Because, um, A, not everyone undergoes this full process of complete, um, let's say, um, penetration into the utmost reality as what Buddha has undergone and he spoke from that level. And B, how practical would that be to kind of uh, shake the household, shake the house um, by telling everyone <laughs> what is um, the essential structure of this whole setup because people have to be ready to accept that. People would have to be however ready to be able to relate on however, however small level. So what happens to our private relationships is a major subject and there are no easy recipes. Everyone would have to go through their own experiences and the only advice here is to understand that while we are undergoing the process of total realignment towards who we are in essence, it is not easy to, we are dealing as it is, as it were, with enough within. So that we are no under any illusions as to where can this process lead us. Because this process is uncoiling of consciousness and it takes place on that level. So essentially the rising of the prana shakti or else known as the whole Kundalini phenomena, is the uncoiling of consciousness from its contracted coiled stage, from its contracted coiled condition. And it takes place within consciousness on that level where consciousness knows itself again. So our individual constructs, which are largely um, just figments of that reality undergo the tremendous transformation as well with that. And so the way we navigate this whole process is very much to the degree with which we can surrender to that process itself. So the truth is, is that very little, very little of the old me can do to the newly opened reality and <laughs> unless unless of course you know we sabotage the whole process and only perpetuate the inner battle inner conflict which often doesn't do anything because consciousness once it's ready to awaken will go through that process regardlessly of what obstructions it might meet. So the best way is to allow what takes place naturally. It's to, until the consciousness is fully in the perceptual sort of place of witness at all situations, non-reactive state of witness, so to speak, there will be temptations to bend this whole process, this whole phenomena under the conditions that we find suitable, so to speak, in some ways, that we find um, legitimately human. But we need to understand that this process remakes us into yet another level of being a human. So 
a lot of inner resolve, wisdom, and flexible fluidity in order we have to become like water. We have to just allow that to happen. And since water and uh, fluid, a juice, is that ingredient where all relationships are steeped in, this is the best hint towards how to deal in any particular, in any given situation where relationship with the other is involved.